I enjoy sharing my experiences. I realize I had a very unique childhood, especially the Naval Ammunition Depot is a unique place. From her birthday in 1930 to her wedding day in 1952, former Naval Ammunition Depot resident Lorreen Palmer Seward lived at what is now the National Register of Historic Places Ordnance Workers Housing. In August 2009, she was an honored guest at the Preserve's Mayor Fair, where she shared her recollections of life at the NAD before, during, and after World War II. Lori's memories bring to life the people who tended their farm animals and victory gardens for their food, who used their physical strength and strong minds to do their work at the NAD, and who served their country proudly. It is a story of love, dedication, commitment, loyalty, and respect. Thank you, Lori, for keeping the spirit of this critical time period alive for all of us to treasure. I realize now, looking back, all us children had a lot of chores around the house, but we also had a great deal of freedom because I was living in a very secure spot. Uh, I, by the time I was 10, I had my own pass. I'd been fingerprinted and I knew I lived behind two security guards. The Marines patrol the NAD area. You may not know that I also had, at the beginning of the war, a canister at the foot of my bed that had a mustard suit and a gas mask. And I was told that I had to carry it with me if we had an air raid drill and went to the air raid shelter. And we had a few, and it was very cold in those cement buildings. Besides the camaraderie here in the NED, everybody working hard around the clock. Um, see, one of my fondest memories in that area, at going to, uh, to school on the school bus when they expanded that machine shop and leveled off near it, they had, it was one of the old steam shovels. And so for a little kid, seeing the steam shovel shoveling oh, off the my. dirt. <laughs> I saw from my quarters, and that was my bedroom. Oh, oh what a view. Yes, <laughs> what yes. A view. Right, and see, I could watch everything coming in oh, and yeah. out the bay. Yeah. Looking over to Crockett, the ships that would pass by going clear up to Sacramento, I realized including the old ferry boats that went various places, but also the train that I knew went clear across the country. And at times when everything was real still, you could even hear when they blew the whistle as they were coming into the train station. And I would say, oh, on time today. <laughs> I got to watch all the ships going in and out, of course, and during the war, I especially would deliberately stand at my quarters and look at the conning towers of the submarines, and I would count how many ships they had sunk, and it made me very proud. And there was one other special thing in the evening for a while. This was before World War II, but somebody who had been very ill at the hospital with lung problems was told that he should learn to play the bagpipes. And so at twilight, uh, there was a man for quite a couple of years that every evening would stroll along from the hospital over, I guess, through the golf course, but towards our way, and when the wind was blowing right, even over here, you could hear the bagpipes. And it was very delightful. <laughs> We depended a lot on our gardens for our food. And my mother baked almost every day. And then there were chickens, and um, everybody had their own vegetable garden, and there were lots of fruit trees. There were, at times, four gardeners for the officers. And so around the whole year, there was always something in the way of fruit to be a tree. They also planted lovely hedges and lots of roses and then they had beds of flowers. The whole beds. I remember the beautiful big genius. We had uh, loads of uh, big snapdragon 
hands. I love to press it so, you know, the little mouth opens on the snapdragon. <laughs> Actually, my mother was very proud when we got our first refrigerator to find it had the coil on the top. I can still remember the ice box before that. All of us trying to get out that pan of water in the bottom of the ice box. And she cooked on a wood stove. And I was always told to stay away down at the bottom of the stairs was where the coal and the chopped up wood was because you were always coming up with more wood for the fire, especially if you wanted to bake and keep an even temperature. And we had a huge apricot tree. And my mother's chore, which I sort of hated to see it coming, we put up a hundred quarts of apricots every year. And besides that, then the leftovers went to jam. And we had two apple trees, a red delicious that my father was proud of because it always seemed to bear well and have very good fruit. So we relied on the apples too for apple cobbler or apple pie. And my mother would buy extra Ravenstein's apples. And I know we also made applesauce. And then we had a whole long row of raspberry bushes. And so we had raspberry jam and uh, the other way of loganberries. And the loganberries didn't just go for jam. My mother would squeeze and make loganberry juice. I was going to school half days. And it turned out my mother's shift was from 12 to 8 at night. So I was home alone all afternoon. I did my homework and there was loads of homework. Fortunately, I loved to read, <laughs> but I was the one that prepared dinner. Before my mother left for work, uh, we discussed the schedule and I knew how to prepare the vegetables. And uh, at first it was just casseroles I had to heat up, but then I, by the time I was 13 or 14, I was basically doing all the cooking. Rattlesnakes. <laughs> they lived in the cliffs down below us. And he uh, deliberately picked up my gopher snake and had me hold it <laughs> when I was very young. And he examined the colors of the individual scales. He wanted me to observe all nature. I still appreciate the beauty of this place because it is unique. I, we would deliberately take hikes to see the special uh, wildflowers when we knew they would be in bloom. We deliberately went down and watched certain uh, tides that came in and out. My father taught me to fish. I used to catch good strike of bass right off the pier here. <laughs> Because uh, my mother especially loved sunsets, and the top of the hill is a beautiful place to see the sunset. In the warm evenings of summer, my mother would, we always had dinner at six, but on warm summer days, she might call us in early so we could take a long, slow walk up the hill and watch the sunset out towards the Golden Gate. I used to walk up there at times with my father in the winter time too just to go for a walk uh, if, the, if the weather was sort of unusual it was our special walk that we loved what did your father do well he started out as a laborer but my father was not tall but he had very strong arms now this is something that I am especially aware of. Everything was done with hand tools <laughs> in those days. And so he had very strong shoulders growing up on the ranch and everything. So he ended up doing plumbing. But he, all the hydraulics that were for basically washing out the casings and doing all the uh, uh, hot water and so forth in the buildings that was so important, he learned uh, how to do and ended up as quarterman for all the systems of fire hydrant. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. The, the Naval Ammunition Depot is a unique place. 
with many special qualities that I actually long for at times, and unusual things like listening to the sound of the foghorn or remembering the flash of the lighthouse.